Hey everybody, welcome to the YouTube Lead Gen Show with Christina Smallhorn and myself, Malcolm Lawson. Christina and I have generated tens of millions of organic views on YouTube, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, most importantly, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of commissions from leads that we've generated from our YouTube, our real estate YouTube videos. You know what? I'm upgrading that to millions of dollars in, in commissions from at this point. Years. At this <laughs> point, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, not only that, do you know I'm over 50 million views to my channel? <laughs> That's huge. Holy huge. cow. You're halfway to 100 million. That's yeah. wild. 50 million views to real estate content. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. No, I think like six years ago, like you probably had so People many People told me it was a waste of my time. I mean, yeah. Six years ago, people told us we were wasting our time. You know, oh, you got to be on you. Forget YouTube. You only need to make a two minute video on on Facebook, people. That's what they used to tell us. Remember? <laughs> oh, I remember. I remember in 2016. I uh, that's when I first got my license. So 2017, I hired a coach, and I was doing YouTube videos. Um, and the guy was telling me it's a waste of your time. Like, what are you what are you doing? Like, there, yep. you have all these proven systems and proven ways to generate leads. Why are you making YouTube videos? Yep. Um, and. Oh my, have the tides turned now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Now they're, now they tell us to come and talk about YouTube. I think that, uh, I think anything works though. Like, honestly, you know, like if you, if you dedicate your time to it and you really believe like that it will work, you know, and there's other people, maybe not necessarily in the real estate space that have proven like something like this works and you believe in it, then it will work, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, literally, like anything, like anything, like TikTok, Instagram, any of them can work. You know, um, there may not be a proven system yet, and model for you to follow just mm -hmm. yet, but it can still work. And maybe you got to be that pioneer. You got to be the one that figures out, okay, what is the model that's going to work on this? Um, you know, just like you've done with with your real estate channel, and you're up to fifty million views, you kind of pioneered and figured out and established that business model. And now other people are trying to follow in your footsteps. And sometimes, yeah, you just got to pioneer and be that pioneer on these different social media platforms. Um, yeah. And like, even though I may say like TikTok, you know, isn't great, but that's because it didn't, I, yeah. I, that's because what I put my time and effort in isn't TikTok, you know? Um, there's agents out there that do and do a, a fantastic job. There's a lady in Maryland that does does it. There's a, I think she's called this real estate chick or something. And uh, she, oh, like whenever there's a mid-century modern home that goes on the market, she always like, is like, look at this, you know, people really enjoy her. She's, she's good. You know, like I've always kind of naysayed on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of like pooped on Instagram a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, I was talking to Katie Day the other day and you know what she's saying is like, um, Instagram is really for her SOI. It's her sphere of influence and agent to agent referrals. Like that's what she gets out of her Instagram. So she gets closed transactions, may not be a majority of brand new people discovering her, but it's right. her SOI and it's her agent to agent referrals that she gets from Instagram. I will honestly say that, that I really believe that and everybody that I've ever talked to that has like success from, from Instagram reels, it's because of agent to agent because uh, agents for some reason follow each other, like mad people. And it just uh, ends up being, that's their sphere of influence because they're following other real estate agents. And then you get to know them. Um, and you're like, Oh yeah, I do know somebody in San Diego, you know, because you're on Instagram all the time and you can just happen to know this agent. So, yeah. you know, it's a good, good referral type thing you know and referrals are awesome that's what i do i mean that's what i use for youtube is referrals but i just so happen instead of having agent to agent it's more customer to agent which is better roi as far as i'm concerned yeah, <laughs> you know sure mm -hmm. yeah and it's, and I, I think you're right like like um jeremy knight has told me the same thing about his instagram page it's mostly real estate agents brad mccallum's told me the same thing um, I've seen a couple, a lot of agents doing these home tours, minute long, sped up fast home tours on Instagram. And it's all agents that follow them. Mm -hmm. um, and like, yeah, it's like, I, you know, I like we're, I'm bashing on naysayers who naysay it against us about doing YouTube, but you know, I'm a naysayer. I naysay against Instagram and maybe I shouldn't be doing that. It's just a different business model. Oh, it's totally different. No, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying that like anything you put your time and effort to, you're going to find your way. And you're going to find a way to make it work, um, you know, and you're always going to have people like <laughs> that say it isn't going to work. But the more you put the time and effort into it, 
the better off you're going to be. I still believe to this day that growing any social media site is better than any ad that you could create. Right. Um, because like I, back in the day, Facebook ads were so simple. Uh, you know, a five-year-old can make them, make them, you know, and they made it very easy to create your own target avatar that you would, you know, you could dedicate these ads to them. And it made it so simple, so simple. You didn't need any other lead source, honestly, because these ads were directly put in front of your audience's eyes. Of course that changed, right? Yeah. And to get successful <clears throat> ads on these social media sites is, is pretty difficult. I mean, it's, of course, don't, don't not do it. You know, if you want to put your listings out there and, and get more exposure to show your sellers that, you know, you're doing that, that I don't, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I would not expect a, that as a huge lead source. That's just getting in front of people because you never even know who the ad is even going to at this point anymore. It's like, it's so, um, filtered out where you don't even know. You're just hoping that the Facebook gods are finding your ad in the right people. Yeah. And then, and then um, the other thing, too, is that um, especially if you don't have an email list, I'll say that. Um, but, you know, to build a social media site from the ground up, like if you are a brand new agent, I would that's how I would start your social media site. There is a, a girl that I met because I went to Pennsylvania this past week. There was a girl that I that was on stage and she literally followed her real estate career from the moment that she got her license. So she started her social media like today I'm getting my license today. I learned this today. I learned this today. I learned this. Like she basically was telling the audience what she was learning every single day. Um, being honest with the fact that she didn't know everything and that she was able to find things out, you know, and then people trusted her because she was willing to admit when she made mistakes. And now right. she has really good following. And that is her number one lead source is social media. I love that. I love hearing that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what you're talking about here is just building a personal brand. And like that is what's really important. And you can do that on any platform. You can build that personal brand, build that relationship value with them, build that trust um, trust with them. I think like where, where I get a little frustrated with like things like Instagram and TikTok is just the clarity around it, where there are people that have big followings on TikTok and Instagram, like, oh, I generate so many leads people like, oh, great. I want to mimic that. I want to copy that with the expectation of like, they're going to get discovered from it. And I think it's just, it's not always clear. Like, Hey, if you're building a following on Instagram, you need to understand is mostly real estate agents that are going to follow you. And it's mostly a method for sphere of influence, you're not getting discovered by, you know, somebody, somebody new, I think for discoverability, I still think YouTube and Google are like the best platforms to get discovered by your target audience. A little trivia for you. Did you know that uh, YouTube has now beat out to Netflix as far as the number one streaming service? I love that. I, uh, <laughs> I know that, but I saw that coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the the thing is, is that like t I, I wrote this post in, in the group. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, TV's dying. Like there's more and more people that are are, are above an age that like literally lived on television, everything that came on television, they would watch it all. You know, the, there were people that would center their lives about Friday night to watch the Friday night, you know, stack of videos or, or Thursday night, you know, with friends and everything else. Those days are gone. You know, they don't exist anymore. And as people become uh, more distrustful of like polished media, the yeah. more they're turning it off and tuning into people that are, making videos in their basement and giving their own personal opinions. That sounds more realistic, a more one-on-one -on -one conversation than somebody behind a desk, behind some fancy lights, behind some fancy makeup, you know, that just seems unrealistic and untouchable. And we have an opportunity as real estate agents to give that less polished. I think they, people are starving for real, you know, starving for it, you know, We've done enough of the uh, tight suits, shiny shoes, slow mo videos. You know, like they're they they want someone to be realistic with them about 100%. about then about things. So, um, you know that that was like the whole thing about the lawsuit. By the way, I mean I'm going to go on a tangent for a second. So everybody, you know, was freaking out about this lawsuit. Blah blah blah. And the comment section of like every social media site, whether it was YouTube, TikTok. Instagram, uh, Facebook, everybody was like, 
real estate agents deserve it. They don't get the, they don't earn that commission. I, why should I pay them this and blah, blah, blah. I mean, literally pooping on all real estate agents, all like they didn't do anything, but fill out a form. And, yeah. and you know why, do you know why the public feels that way is because we never shared all the stuff we actually did. We glamorized this business in a way that they, we shielded them from the negative stuff. We didn't talk about how we were up till three o'clock in the morning trying to save a deal. We didn't talk about how, you know, the inspection went so bad and the sellers weren't going to give it up, but you didn't want the buyers to find out about it. So you gave up some of your commission. You didn't share those stories. And I think from here on out, you have an opportunity to show your value when you share those type of stories and video is going to be the best way to do that. So even if you're giving a, um, a, you know, let's just say a traditional pros and cons video, it's important for you. And I, I'm going to, it's important for you to share some story on how you saved somebody because of something happened in a deal. It can be a very short one minute story, but I would include that in all of your videos from here on out because that way you can prove your value um, as a real estate agent and why they should be paying you, especially if you're a buyer's agent. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you're absolutely right. You know, like what, the, the real reason why we charge so much is because we'll, I'll go out and show a buyer 10 different properties i'll spend mm -hmm. 20 30 hours with them and then they don't buy anything and and because of that 20 30 hours that i have to spend on multiple buyers like i need to make that up with one commission and mm -hmm. you're absolutely right like, buyers don't see that they every now and then you get lucky and be like oh you only showed me three properties and you're making a ten thousand dollar commission it's like yeah but like when i average it out like the average real estate agent makes fifty five thousand dollars a year you know yep. And you're right like we're we're not educating them and for the longest time there's you know the idea of a real estate agent was somebody dresses in a really expensive suit drives a really nice car has a really nice watch and so people are kind of promoting how successful they are how much how affluent they are how much money they have and like i think that hurts them more than anything for the average consumer right well think about how many times that like i've seen this a gazillion times how many agents are like look at all the houses I've sold. Look at my volume. Look at my sales awards. We're the only profession that does that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're the only ones. And so the, to the public eye, that just makes you look like a douche canoe. I mean, honest to God, it just really does. You just look like a tool. So, yeah. I mean, I understand that you're proud of, of the sales that you've made, but how many people have you helped and how have you helped them? That's what they really want to hear. They really don't care that you've sold all these houses. It's, it, it, it really doesn't help the average person buying a house. Um, unless you're like in commercial sales where those things, those numbers are for that specific customer because they're, they're numbers people. But to the average person buying a house, to them, they see that and they're like, you're overpaid. All I ever see you do is go out to lunch and make videos all day. Yeah. You know? and we're in a, we're seeing a paradigm shift right now mm -hmm. where credibility, like what consumers look for as credibility is shifting. And if I had to choose between being having 10 years of experience as a real estate agent, and I can go up to a, a home buyer, home seller, tell them I've been an agent for 10 years or have a hundred YouTube videos about my local market and about my local city. I feel like those hundred YouTube videos give me more credibility than Absolutely. Having years of experience or having, Oh, look, I was the number one seller in my, my, uh, my market center, or, you know, I did, um, 10 million in volume last year. I think the content gives you way more credibility than these other like accolades do. I think that, uh, it's an ego thing though. You know, like, oh, yeah. so you, you like, especially when you're, you're young, right. And in, in a lot of us grew up on like HGTV, you know, like all these real estate agents that were like, you know, love it and listed and, you know, luxury, you know, was selling sunset and all these other things. So you're, if you say you're young, younger, you know, and then you get to the age when you become a real estate agent. So you think that you have to convey those types of things. Yeah. Then you end up on Instagram, right? And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to show them the lifestyle, you know, this lifestyle, because I want to attract these type of buyers because that's what I've seen on TV. And, and social media came up at that exact time that when those shows were very popular. So I think that's what happened 
uh, it became like this, you have to show your ego, you know, you're going to have to be pompous and you have to show your money. And I mean, it was just, I think social media and that happened at the exact same time. And so that's why it made us even look worse because we never really had real estate agents never really had a good reputation and, and deservedly. So don't get me wrong. There's agents out there that are just awful. But uh, I feel like the really good ones that are um, like this, uh, this industry needed a, uh, a little enema anyway. And there's going to be some people that fall off. But I feel like the ones that are um, the hustle grind only look at as a number. They're not going anywhere. They're just they're going to they're going to learn how to adapt. Um, so you're going to have to learn how to adapt too. just be the better person. Don't yeah. be. Just, you know, share those stories. Be a real authentic person. Don't be afraid to show who you are. Oh, and another thing too. I, I, I've heard this a lot recently. That people think they're too old to be on video. Like they say, I want to do it. Uh, I'm just so nervous. I'm not young like everybody else. Nobody cares. <laughs> no, nobody cares. They really honestly don't care. Um, like that, that doesn't phase them unless you're only trying to attract younger buyers of course younger people are going to attract more younger people to work with uh, but nobody cares honest to god it's the value you provide um you could be 108 they wouldn't care yeah everybody gets self-conscious about doing video mm -hmm. um and you know there's a couple reasons why one is like when you hear your voice it sounds very different when you hear it being played back than when you hear it in your own head that's for everybody and then two, like when you're looking at an image of yourself, it is flipped horizontally compared to what you see in a mirror. So mm -hmm. this is my my left side, but it's on the right side of the image. Like my face is flipped horizontally and that throws everybody off and they think that they look weird. Um, and it's just, I think being aware of those two facts helps out uh, a lot and helps people kind of get over that, that anxiety that they have about being on, on camera. You know, so we're talking about kind of like the, you know, the new age media versus old school uh, media. Did you watch, uh, we had a little political here. Did you watch the um, Don Lemon and the Elon Musk interview? I only saw like a TikTok of it. It didn't go very well. Um, Elon so, was very uncomfortable. I, that's the only clip I saw. I didn't watch the whole entire thing, but I watched the part where he was talking about specific speech and how um, he didn't, you know, isn't that considered free speech? And he, Elon got very uncomfortable and was annoyed. So, oh, okay. Well, that, okay. That's a different story. That's, I, I feel like that's probably doctored uh, that, that, mm -hmm. that clip there. Um, but I, don't, I know well, it was on TikTok. I, take, I mean, I take that with a very grain of salt, you know? Well, he, here's why I bring it up because, um, mm -hmm. Don Lemon, I guess he, he left CNN, um, and he's left the mainstream media. He's now trying to go, uh, and be a YouTuber. He's trying to create, mm -hmm. uh, his own independent brand. Um, and he's talking to Elon Musk about that. And Elon Musk brought up the fact that X is now the largest news platform in the world by, by leaps and bounds. They, there are more people who get news from X.com or the X app than from CNN or Fox News or any of these legacy media companies. And it's mm -hmm. because it's, it's user generated news. So it's right. something happens, people can tweet it and immediately like the number of exposures that news gets on X it leaps and bounds way more than mainstream media is um, today. And like, so we've passed that, that mi milestone where the user generated content is now people's main source of, of news and it's now becoming their main source of entertainment um, as well. And so while we're talking about Don Lemon, um, he started his YouTube channel and it is the ugliest damn thing I have That's ever terrible. seen. terrible. These are terrible thumbnails and terrible uh, titles. Oh, um, look at his views. 600 views. That's terrible. The only videos that got a lot. Look how short they are too. They're less than two minutes. The, he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have a strategy. That was no. the whole reason for this. This was the whole reason for our live stream is to have a, have a strategy. Um, like, yeah, like what is this? Like how? Like he, this is like Don Lemon. He's been on CNN for a decade plus, and he can't just hire a, a, a college student to manage his YouTube channel for him. And like the only video that got any any traction was his interview with Elon, Elon Musk. Musk, and that is because he hyped the hell out of it 
you know, at the mm -hmm. beginning. He said some really controversial things in it um, just to stir the pot, just to get newsworthiness. You got 1.2 million views. And then everything else is, you know, 600 views, 900 views, 1.4 thousand views. But I mean, like he, he doesn't like this is the whole thing, though, is that in order to survive and thrive on any platform, doesn't matter if it's in, it doesn't matter what social media site, you have to find out what the culture of that specific right. uh, the platform is. YouTube is two things, either your shorts, you know, you have a good punchy, you know, short form content that will uh, attract an audience or you have long form. Obviously he's a long form uh, creator, right? He's a news guy. Uh, he, he hasn't followed that method. I mean, he's two minute videos, three minute videos. I mean, um, for a guy who has a very recognizable brand name, his, his views should be way better than this. I mean, off the charts better than this. There's no reason that his, I mean, there's no reason why it should be like this. It's, it's embarrassing. Like there are members in this group. There's a lot of members in this group that could give him coaching and do way better. better like at least this. somebody, anybody to manage this. And like, even his, the quality of his content, it, it's like, uh, he's using a web brain scheme. Oh Pretty my yeah. God. The green screen green screen mm -hmm. and uh and then the 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 words on the screen like these are like to me that's an instagram reel with that the way that that's formatted with the words yeah, like is. showing up like that oh you're right yeah um like oh my god man he's missing the mark like what like, do you he, yeah man and like this is this is when the old school legacy media they're trying to adapt the new stuff and like th this is like a terrible terrible thumbnail um, it's just, it's interesting to me kind of watching this and how bad this, this really is. Um, and like, yeah, no, they're, they're dinosaurs, you mm -hmm. know, that the legacy media is, is dinosaurs. And it's so interesting that you're saying that YouTube finally surpassed Netflix as well. Legacy entertainment industry is, you know, a lot, there's a lot of dinosaurs in that industry as well. People hate celebrity. Like I've seen more people flip on a celebrity more than anything else <laughs> over the last year. I mean, people that I would never have thought in a million years would like, I thought, oh, well, they'll just die a legend. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> like people are like, we're done, you know, like, and they're tired of seeing like that, you know, like, oh, I, I have somebody, you know, make sure that they blow on my coffee for me 10 times before they hand uh -huh. it to me. Like those people, I know, people are like, ew, you're gross. Yeah. <laughs> I, right, well, we went yeah. on a tangent and we we were Oops. like, the whole reason for this live stream was to talk about your, your YouTube strategy because Malcolm and I have noticed there's like, there's some markets, there's some areas that are like really saturated with uh, real estate agents and they're all following pretty much like the same YouTube formula of, uh, you know, pros and cons living in moving to, but that market is so saturated. They're really having a tough time getting uh, real estate leads. And, uh, so the thing is, is it's time for you to switch up your content strategy. You, you, it's a great place to start, but you, now you have to shift and, and uh, now is a perfect time to do it because there's going to be a bunch of people that are like, chicken littling right now you know like they're all like oh my god this guy's falling but the real estate's done and this is when you need to double down and really start filming stuff that is beyond just those pros and cons and living in and moving to type videos yeah it, it's tough you know um it's it's you know i i what i always say is different is better than better you yeah. know don't, don't look at somebody's video and like wow i want to do this but i'm gonna do it better what can you do different you know, can you come up with a different idea for a video? Can you do it differently? Can you have a different variation of that title, a different variation of that thumbnail image? Can you do something that really stands out and makes it different? Um, and that's what you got to do. Like there are, I was talking to an agent yesterday and she just started with YouTube like six months ago. She's actually doing really good content mm -hmm. and doing a lot of things right but she's late to the game and there's 20 to 30 other real estate agents making the exact same content who took the exact same course, um, the same style content, same call to action, same video topics. Um, and she's just, just drowning in this, you know, sea of, of content. 
And, you know, so my, my suggestion was her is like, well, different is better and better. Like, can you do something oh. different? And I think that kind of the emerging um, channels right now are going to be these home tour channels. Oh, like, well, that's been a thing. That is, I don't even think that's new. Like, it's, it's, it's been you, a thing, but there's still a lot of markets that don't have a dedicated home tour channel that's done well, that is like focused on new construction, for example, or somebody is being very consistent um, about it. And I'm seeing a lot more. Yeah, They're not consistent. consistent. Yeah, that's a, that you have to be consistent on those. Yeah. And they and they have to like uh, and if you think you're like two minutes videos of walkthrough tours is the thing that ain't it. No. That is not it. You really need to study uh, what's working on YouTube. There are literally people that watch those t home tour channels to fall asleep to them. You know, they like they like just watching yeah. those. Um, so, yeah, stand out. There's a lady in Atlanta that's been doing these home tours forever. And I, I literally terrible thumbnails, but she's been consistently doing it for like seven years. And every single one of her videos is like over 800,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's interesting because like you know we have there's like best practices on youtube mm -hmm. but for every best practice there's always an exception to it there's always somebody who's not following those best practices but they're consistent with it and they've been doing it for years and they have success despite not following it um there's other you know especially if they're an early adopter you know mm -hmm. where they pioneered that model they don't always have to follow best practices and so it gets tricky when you're an upcoming youtuber and you're looking at that content and you're like well i want to recreate this i want to do it like they're doing but like no no they're not doing best practices they're having success because they've been doing this every single week for seven years straight you know you need to as an up and coming you do need to follow best practices for some of that content well i want to um point out something too because i know like a lot of times people are afraid to do anything different they're like oh you know i'm not I'm afraid to do something different. Well, if you have a good content strategy, you know what video is going to be coming out every single week. You pretty much have put your content calendar together and you know what, what system that you're following. But always, every once in a blue moon, you always have an extra week and you're like, uh-oh, what am I going to do? That's the perfect opportunity to test something, right? And sometimes your test isn't good. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> I, I I thought I did like I I actually had a feeling this wasn't gonna do well, but it was like I'm gonna do it because I thought it'd be fun, you know. Like I sometimes you just have to do things not for the algorithm, but for yourself, and it makes you feel good just because you made it. But I did this video uh, about the um, uh, what actually happens in a modular home factory. I I, I knew it wasn't. I've changed this thumbnail out. 15 times. I knew it wasn't going to do well. Right. Um, but it's a really fun video and it's, uh, you ever watched the VH1 pop-up videos? Have you ever watched that? Yeah. Like 10 yeah. years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But well, that's what I did. I did pop-up video for, <laughs> I did a pop-up video with, um, with this modular home tour just to give like random facts about modular homes. Like, you know, Sears and Roebuck, uh, you know, used to have modular homes and, you know, you have them delivered to your house and you could build your own house. And uh, the first, the first modular home, do you know when that was? Do you know when the very first modular home? Uh, 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 after World War II, maybe? I don't know. 1600s, 1600s. So people would bring their homes from, uh, from overseas on a ship bring it over and then rebuild it in the United States. Isn't that wild? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, um, yeah. So anyways, that was my video. Like, and I, I just thought, I thought it was really cool because they're building these, a lot of these houses with a lot of robotics and stuff. Yeah. Thought it was super interesting, but I had a feeling because that doesn't really follow my content strategy or what my, my audience is really interested in that wouldn't do well, did not. But sometimes you have to do stuff for yourself to keep your sanity. I just want yeah, to know. 100%. I mean, that is interesting. Seven days ago, you got 97,000 views on that video. And then you get 3,000 views on that last one. I knew it. And, and you're absolutely right. Like, like burnout's a real thing. And if you yeah. keep making the kind of content that, you know, will get you views, but it doesn't like satisfy you at all. Like you, you can't get those creative juices flowing. Like you, and this is common that agents or uh, YouTubers will do like, all right, two pieces of content for the algorithm, one piece of content for me, for myself. I'm a passion, I have a passion project for, you know? Yeah, I do that. 
I do that. And I have a different editor for that, those passion projects. I have the, the standard editor that like does my uh, videos for modular homes, manufactured homes and all that stuff. I just throw them to them. But then I have like, if I have a passion project like this, you know, I, I have another guy that does it like, yeah. and I'm a little, I'm willing to give him a little extra, you know? yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little extra cheddar there. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah. Like, you know, you have to keep it sustainable and you have to keep these creative juices flowing on my outdoor channel. You know, I used to do top 10 list of gear and those videos would do incredibly well, hundreds of thousands of views, but like I would get so burnt out from doing those. Mm -hmm. And the kind of my passion project was like, I like doing vlogs and me going camping. And they would, you know, get a couple of thousand views versus hundreds of thousands and it just totally flop. But I like doing them. And like that was, a, I was trying to for a while there go camping once a month just to do a vlog and me camping. Um, and like that was my passion project from those. I didn't know you did a video on the seven hidden costs of buying tiny homes. <laughs> I didn't know you did a video on that. <laughs> oh, but you're looking at my channel? No, I was just, I was literally looking for your outdoors channel. I couldn't remember the name. So I put Mal Mal Malcolm Lawson outdoors and then that video popped up in the, in the search. How, how's it doing? I did the video like four years ago. You did it four years ago. It has 3,700 views. Yeah. See, I tried <laughs> making big waves. This is right after you had success with like your first tiny home video. I was like, oh, I'm going to do a video about tiny homes. And I thought it was a good thumbnail. Um, but, 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 the, and, but you now know the reason why, if people don't know why, and this happens all the time, I'm going to uh, let another perfect example. Uh, Paul Likens had mm -hmm. a very successful video about condos. He also had already proven himself with the algorithm on that topic. If you looked at all of his top co uh, content prior to him having that viral hit, I think it's over a million views now. He had it about condos. He had a successful title. He had a successful thumbnail. After that, everybody in their brother decides, I'm going to go ahead and make a video about uh, condos and not one of them hit the, the same kind of stride as Paul, because you don't get me wrong. A lot of them had a lot more success than they would typically because it was a hot topic at that specific time, but it, you're not going to have the same success as somebody that has put in the time, work, effort, and established an audience that YouTube knows that they could deliver this content to. Um, you know, like if you all of a sudden you're always talking about lake homes and then all of a sudden you start talking about condos, it's differentiates what you've always talked about. So it doesn't make sense. If you're going to make a video about condos and you have a channel about lake homes, the thing to do is to say, uh, what, you know, HOA restrictions on lake, uh, lake condo homes, you know, so though all those things tie together, then you'll have more success. But you can't just say, oh, well, they had a viral hit with this specific topic. I'm going to go ahead and do it, too, and think you're going to have the same success. You have to follow your content strategy and your avatar and what you're talking about. So it, it's cohesive. Right. Yeah, I love it. I love that Paul's having that kind of success. Like he's been he's been consistent at this for years and he's finally mm -hmm. like starting to find his his stride. Uh, and like even this one three weeks ago, 66,000 views. That's, those are good numbers. Yeah. And it's interesting. Like then we, we look at this one, are all moving companies bad? Like for me, I look at that and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's a very different thumbnail. And mm. it's not, that topic doesn't really quite seem like it's in line with this other content and like sure enough, 400 views. Um, but yeah, yeah that boat show, you know? Yeah. 10,000 views, mm -hmm. 2.7 in four days. So good for him for like finally getting some traction with that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, yeah, this is a an eye catching thumbnail, uh, and it, I think you know that's a pretty good title um, as, as well. And I, I love that you know he, he does everything we talk about. Like he, the text is very minimal, but it's eye catching condo mm -hmm. crisis, and it complements the title very well. Can Florida mm -hmm. condo owner survive these changes? Yep. I, I love seeing that, that Paul's finally getting some traction. Remember when he did this one too, Quitting Florida, and that one did pretty well, 52,000 mm -hmm. views. Um, the nice long videos. So good for him. That's interesting. And so that's pretty funny. So you're saying a lot of other people started doing condo videos like oh, that. Oh, I mean, it was like, I mean, I, li I literally saw somebody put it out like the very next day. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, but some people, 
and I, I've noticed this, uh, you know, there's some people that are chasing views and there's some people that are, are like really trying to build a, uh, build an audience, build an audience and build a, uh, a pipeline. Um, that that's the difference, you know, that's what I'd say. Cause yeah. you, you, you can't like, um, you know, like for some reason people can't consolidate those two things, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it happens sometimes with, uh, you know, I've had, uh, worked with people in the past and that's all they're working for is more views, more views. And, but, but, but what, what's your goal? You know, like you sure you want more views, you know, you're just chasing views, but you know, who's your avatar? What's your goals? Yeah. You know, what's your business model with that? What's your business model for this? What are you trying to do? You know, are you just trying to, be youtube famous i mean we could do that i mean just let me know what you're trying to do like I'm, I'm confused um and so is the audience and so is youtube so you know <laughs> that's why that's why they uh sometimes they're not very successful but you know like if you're if you're wanting to build like a, a youtube real estate thing like that like just chase views like that uh and um i would go with a like Daryl Eves, he'll tell you how to build build and blow up a channel, have more viral variety. Yeah, yeah. Variety. yeah. And, he, and he talks about that, having that experimental bucket as well, mm -hmm. like you're talking about. Like you have to try something new. There's a lot of buckets. You have a bucket of content, and maybe you can get like ten videos in that bucket before you kind of run out of concepts for it. So you always have to be experimenting, trying new buckets. Well, we got about. 23 minutes left. Do you want to start doing some channel reviews and give them some? Sure. Feedback? I love channel reviews. <laughs> like right. me and Joe do them every week. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you guys do your, so you do your live streams on your YouTube channel. Right. On Thursday. We have a, a Facebook page, but we don't, I mean, it's just, that was just because yeah. we were going to make ads and stuff, which we stopped doing because they were stupid. All um, right. So, so I've got the ads were good. It's just, no, you know, they're not very, so we got people are tired of being sold. Right. Yeah, I mean, ads can work. Um, yeah, no, I'm not saying that they can. I just uh, right. It's just like I think organic content like works better. Building, mm -hmm. having a personal brand works better. You know, doing live streams and like providing your value to them like it works better than than ads definitely. So we got I got three channels here pulled up, and the first one's okay. not a non real estate channel called Scissors. Okay. Scissors. So it's kind of a funny title. Um, <laughs> so this looks like it's an interview or sort of a podcast um, type channel. And I, I find that really interesting because I was, I had a, a call the other day with uh, an interview with Dustin Brom, who has the uh, Massive Agent podcast. And he has a lot mm -hmm. of success on podcast platforms for his podcast. And he's just recently started doing video with it and trying to start a YouTube channel. I was kind of talking to him about like, yeah, it, it can be hard to build a podcast video on YouTube of just doing interviews or just doing it's getting a better though, because now YouTube recognizes like there is a tab now that recognizes that this is a podcast, you know? Right. Yeah. So it's get they're getting better about that. But um I would uh if it was me, I would really look into your thumbnails a little bit better. You know, um, I would I say, would, yeah. Okay. okay. What, what's your feedback on, on, on the thumbnails? It, it, well, the thumbnails, I would, I would get rid of the logo. First off, there's no reason for the logo. You don't need it. Secondly of all, um, I would, your, your titles, right? The titles are not like, who cares? I don't, I don't understand the titles. Um, and then lastly, I would say, um, I would work on some kind of strategy and what you're talking about. Like I would look at, for instance, there's a, there's a channel called two hot takes, right? And she's very consistent on the fact that all that she's doing is really reading relationship type Reddit posts and her and her guests are having a conversation about that. Right. And they're sitting in beanbag chairs and they're having fun with that. I don't know from reading your titles, what, your your shtick is i have no yeah, idea sure. that's that's my feedback as well so butcher or blackbird yeet or be yeeted um like if so so okay so the way i look at at channels is that you have discoverable content 
discoverable content, I think is kind of the top level uh, of your kind of your sales funnel. And you need content that will build an audience. So Paul Lincoln had those condo videos that build an audience. Mm -hmm. And now that Paul has an, an audience, he can create content that just provides value to that audience. He could do a vlog, him walking around his neighborhood and that vlog would never really get discovered. But if he has an audience already, they will find value and then they'll click on that. And when I see this, this is the type of content that would do well if you already have an audience. Um, and truthfully, you have 188 views, 152 views. So I wouldn't be surprised if you do have an audience somewhere and maybe you're sending this out on email list or social media and you're sending traffic to it. Um, but this wouldn't be discoverable content. If this mm -hmm. just showed up on my home screen, I never knew who you were, butcher or blackbird, yeet or be yeeted, I wouldn't click on that. Mm -hmm. and, and so I would encourage you to try to, can you format this to be discoverable so that somebody who's never seen you before, don't know who you are, they would actually want to click on this video, this thumbnail as well. And the people that know you would also want to click on the thumbnail. So right now, this is only really appealing to, if you already have an audience. It's not appealing to somebody that's brand new. Um, and so it looks like you're just sending these videos to an editor who's cutting out your images and then kind of creating this thumbnail image as an afterthought. And yeah, I would encourage you to pick like the most eye-catching, interesting topic in the video, ideally something that you cover kind of early in the video or you hint at, at the beginning of the video and make the title around that, you know? So if you're talking about relationships here, you know, um, that, that'd be a great thing to have in there or dating or something. I, 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 like, I have no idea what this video, I don't know what yeet or yeeted, be yeeted means. I have no idea. I'm confused. <laughs> Forever and ever, what I would, what would I do without coffee, 25 to life, who cares? Like the, I mean, the, 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 the titles are disjointed. Like I, and it's like almost like reading somebody's diary, you know, <laughs> you know, like they're just like, it seems very random. Yeah. Um, and, and so I have, I do interview stuff, um, as well on my, on my channel that I have. And so let me, uh, I, I want one more thing before I forget. And also with a podcast, yeah, on YouTube, if you want it to be successful, go over that hour. One hour, one minute. One hour, one oh. minute. Um, that that's pretty well known. Yeah. You know. And you know what? You're you're right that it doesn't look like it's actually set up as a YouTube podcast as well. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, here we go. I can share this tab. Mm -hmm. So I have YouTube, you can actually have a YouTube podcast. And if I come here to podcast and it's just a playlist. And mm -hmm. everything that I add to this playlist gets added to my YouTube podcast automatically. And so if people have YouTube music, which is growing in popularity, they can listen to these as just a podcast. Um, and it looks like you don't have that set up on your Scissor Sisters. Um, and, and so like- The I, name I, is really funny though, I have to say. <laughs> the name of the channel is really funny. <laughs> Yeah. And, and so like, I struggle with these interviews that I do as well. And this is kind of what I've, I've kind of settled on is one, I think it's important just to have my face is really big, just so that the people who know me, this is going to show up and they're going to click on it mostly because they know me. But then I do try to optimize it a little bit for discoverability as well. And so I don't have just, Hey, next gen, um, agent podcast episode 27 mm -hmm. i have how to build a hundred million dollar real estate business with video and social media like that is something that we cover in this interview and it's more of a clickable title than eat or be yeeted mm -hmm. um and then as far as like the i, I try to add some colors um and that, that's kind of the format that i'm doing for a lot of my podcasts now is really like my face two big faces and some colors. And then if we talk about YouTube or Instagram or something, I'll put that in there. And again, I, I try to come up with a clickable title, Brad's McKellen secrets of social media video success. Mm -hmm. but, but, but here's the truth. Like for me personally, these types of videos are never my most popular videos. Um, I need to create other content that is that discoverable channel content that builds my audience. And then for me, this other type of content provides value to that audience. Um, the only exception that I found is I, on this particular channel, I started doing like agent debates interviews mm -hmm. and those seem to be 
I watch that on Facebook. You know, I don't like honestly I, to watch listen to real estate agents talk. <laughs> it's kind of like, Bleh. but those that was interesting to me. I actually listened to those. I thought they were great. Yeah, that was a yeah. good concept. And see, the thing is, if you followed what everybody else tells you to do, you would have never experimented with something that was successful. Right. And I, that that was a great idea. And you don't know it until you test it. I think that was a great idea. I actually had people telling me I should not do that video. Um, I had people tell me, like, no, no, don't do a debate video. Like, you know, it's a terrible idea. What do they say? Bad things. No, like, no, no, who cares? This is a friend of mine. Like, this is going to be mm -hmm. good. It's going to be a friendly debate. And those are, and those are one of the few exceptions that I've found that it's an interview, but it's also a discoverable piece of content. Mm -hmm. and, and so for Scissor Sisters, you know, you do your, um, could you do also add in a, um, a, a once a week dedicated video that mm -hmm. will be targeting the exact same target audience and with the exact same value proposition that will actually build your audience for you. And then this type of content can kind of provide that value to your audience. I will, uh, if, if that's not like your ultimate goal, I would tell you to go ahead and strip that, strip the audio from that and just go ahead and put it on podcast for, uh, platforms. Just go ahead and that, do that. What's so, on the blackboard? She's saying, so she's saying that those are book titles. We started this less than oh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, nothing all organic. Okay. That's awesome. If that's all, all mm -hmm. organic, I love so, that. Obviously people like that. You guys like, like the format, you know, of what you're doing. If you just tweak your thumbnails and titles, you probably have a lot more success because that that's pretty good numbers for, for just starting out. Yeah. If that's all organic, um, like that is really good. Um, mm -hmm. it, and I, I like the production quality. I like, um, the multiple shots that you have. I like the studio. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say I, I'm, I kind of agree with Christina. I think just the titles and the thumbnails, can you make them more clickable? It's like right now you're taking the screen grabs from the uh, interview. Like maybe you can make just, dedicated videos. Right. And then like that whole thing with the outline on the back, that's kind of a passe. The white, the white uh, stroke behind people. That's kind of like a, that ship has sailed. That was a look for a hot minute, but I don't feel like that's, that's a thing on YouTube anymore. So tell us what, what is the channel about? What is the content actually about? Um, Obviously it's about books. She just said it was books. Oh, they're okay. reviewing. So it's okay. I thought it was like, a... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, that, and see, that's a play on words. That's why I think it's so funny because the right. dudes are like, Ooh, <laughs> that's but, why I but Okay. It. So these are book reviews, um, our think... conversations about books. I never would have picked that up ever. Uh, with, with scissor sisters and the image and you know i never would have picked that up at all you know and so like you have the pictures of you and the um the chairs maybe have a picture of the book that you're talking about in the background yeah. or something indicating that it's a book review or talking about different right books. so like you have the jacket of the book behind you as you guys are sitting in your chairs mm -hmm. it's one camera okay cool are you are you filming in like 4k and then you're cropping in on, on the two of you let's see mm -hmm. i'm a he sorry uh mm -hmm. my name is ramsey that's my wife and her friend's podcast mm -hmm. her, okay that's okay your wife uh, and her podcast and uh -huh. what, what's it about it's about books is it like book reviews that's what i think they said okay well yeah look you're off to a great start um uh -huh. You know, I would just say, try to make it a little bit more clickable for somebody who's never doesn't know what the, the channel is about or who you doesn't know your story. Like if I'm having a hard time kind of picking up on what the, the content is about and who the target audience is, I feel like uh, somebody who's never seen it before, they're going to have a hard time picking up on like, oh, this is a book review. Um, I listen to a lot of female podcasters, you know, and the more snarky and funny they are, the more I'll listen to them. Um, you know, and it doesn't even really matter what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, book. Yeah. So I would put the jacket of the book behind them as they're sitting in the two chairs in the front. That's what I would do. Yeah. I think that'd be helpful. Like even, so my, mm -hmm. my thumbnails that I was, I was showing you that I, I do, if I'm talking about, um, YouTube or Instagram, I at least put that somewhere in the thumbnail image just mm -hmm. so people be like, Oh, this one's talking about Instagram. This one's talking about YouTube. Um, 
especially if it's like a trending book or something. Um, but yeah, no, you're off definitely off to a, a really good start. Um, well, uh, that's the hardest thing is get started. So you know, like most people, they'll just talk about it. I have, I have a couple of students that literally will ask a gazillion questions, have been asking the same stuff, building, like they have all these ideas and doing it, do it, do it. They, every week they're there and they have yet to start a channel. It's like a year and a half. 100%. The analysis paralysis for real. I'm like, oh my God, just film a damn move video. Just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Just take action. Yeah. And then they, then they like kind of like talk themselves out of it because like, what if this happens? And you know, this, uh, you're, you're, you're talking about things that don't exist because you've never filmed it. <laughs> like you can't even, you can't even analyze and adjust because you're all working on this. Yeah. You know, it, like the truth is like, there's lessons that you're going to learn that it's easier to learn just by doing it rather than trying to learn. I want to learn all the lessons first and then and take action. It. Now, learn some of the basics, take action and learn it as you go along the way. You're going to learn it better by doing than you will by, you know, I want to, you know, yeah. Analysis paralysis is a real thing take action and so they're doing it scissor sisters is just filming and taking action which i love to see yeah and then and they can learn along the way i just want to show people this like i didn't know what i was doing right like look at my thumbnails terrible terrible like i didn't know what i was doing but the thing is is that i did it you know like look at this one with all the freaking words and i, I leave that. these on here i leave them on here because like what what's the worst that can happen yeah you know like I, I know it's going to watch this stuff, but it's a good reminder of we all come from somewhere, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. You know? Um, yeah. You just have to, you're just taking action. You're taking yeah. action and, and you're like a rule of thumb for me is try to get at least 1% better every single time, mm -hmm. whether that's in your presentation, whether it's in your titles, whether your, your thumbnails, whether it's your editing, just get 1% better every single time. And if you do that for six years, like you're going to get pretty damn good uh, at this game in the end. <laughs> Look at that. Like, these are so bad. They're comical. <laughs> but, you know, no, the, at least I did it. You know, yeah. you know, you just got to start sometimes. And, you know, six years ago, like that probably was more common to have thumbnails like that. I feel like people really dialed in. Well, actually, like what? It, that, that's that's those are like as good as Don Lemon's thumbnails are today. Right, right. You know? But I don't I don't have a, a media team behind me, and I don't have a name. <laughs> yeah, and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, that I like I I feel like anybody in our group that has even sat in this group for more than you know a month probably could do better thumbnails than that. Yes. You know, you know I um I recently started experimenting with having people off Fiverr do my thumbnails uh, for my podcast. And this was, this cost me $5 to have this thumbnail made right here. And then and we clicked on it. <laughs> I actually kind of like it. Like this is not a bad. I like thing. it, but there's too many words. It's yes. like, there's way too many words. That would have been my, my feedback. Like really, you kind of don't need any words. Like just a no. background, a mic and like two faces is kind of all that you really need. I would have. Um, yeah, I would take all those words off. That's why like these aging debates I, I've been doing, I don't have any words. I have a versus. I have yeah. two letters. And like that's all you need. Um, but seriously, he Don Lemon could just pay somebody five dollars to make a better thumbnail. Um, and you know what? Scissor sisters, like go on on uh Fiverr and experiment. Go hire five different people and give them five bucks. Use AI. You can use AI as a background. You know, where it has like a bookshelf. Oh, that I, I love that idea. So tell them, uh, like AI can probably read like the books and knows what the book's about. And type in AI, create me an image of uh, representing the book, eat or be eaten. Mm -hmm. And I bet you would create a really crazy image that you can use as the background and then have them sitting in those armchairs if you want to use those images in the front. Yeah, so you'd use Mid Journey, or you could use um, you could use uh, Chat GPT's AI for that. All right, I'm doing it. Hold on, I'm going to Chat GPT right now. <laughs> for any of you uh, who don't know how to how to do it, do you number? Do you have the paid version? Yeah, I got the paid okay. version. Yeah, um, please, if you're gonna do this, you got to get the paid version. So create me a YouTube thumbnail image. Um, representing the concepts in the book 
Uh, yeet v or v yeeted. Yeeted. Mm -hmm. Make the image realistic and eye-catching. Mm -hmm. And it'll take 20 seconds. Um, so, uh, sometimes it takes a little longer. I, I did a live stream yesterday, and mm -hmm. um, I, I was talking to somebody about this, and I said, like, you want to stand out in the market. So I told her, um, I w did this exact episode. I said, I said, generate me a YouTube thumbnail image showing Boca Raton real estate market frozen over. Make it realistic and eye-catching. And this is the image that it created. And I love that image. That would make such a great YouTube thumbnail image right there for Boca Raton. Um, and then I told it to create me another one. It created me this version of these tropical cities completely frozen over. Um, I Yeah, I love this idea of using chat GPT. Uh, what happened? Let's go. I, I, uh, I, the, the, thing, the thing is, I'll tell you though, if you're gonna do something like this, still follow the basic principles is that if it if it's hard if you have to take more than three seconds to figure out what the image is that you're gonna have to start over you still have to simplify the image you can't make it too busy um you know like those were very pretty thumbnails but you gotta only have a split second to get people's attention and i i didn't the clarity on that second image was not that it was frozen over it was kind of like frosty almost you know like it was more like i had to look at it you know the first one was better that's not right <laughs> so this looks terrible um, that looks terrible but sometimes you have to play with the prompts for a while and i and i um i do that all the time and then i'll, I'll be like make it uh more hyper realistic and sometimes you have to give it a link to that book in order for it to know what it's about um, oh really yeah um like i whenever i do uh whenever I do uh, any kind of uh, articles and stuff like that, I literally copy and paste the actual article from the top to the bottom and have it break it down to a paragraph to help me understand it. Because sometimes a lot of real estate articles recently um, are full of fluff, full of fluff. So you have to, um, you know, like you have to, I just want, I want the highlights. I don't, I don't want to sit there and read all that crap. The <laughs> guy saying yeet or be yeet is, is not the name of the book. Oh, uh, that's probably why we can't find it. All right. Well, whatever. Uh, you you get what we're saying. <laughs> create me a YouTube image um, representing the book uh, to kill a mockingbird. Make it hyper realistic and eye catching. I, what I do is hyper ultra realistic. <laughs> Jesus, ultra. <laughs> super duper realistic yeah yeah I, I mean i try to i want it to be like as realistic as possible and i'll keep doing it too i'm like more realistic more realistic <laughs> more realistic even more realistic i'll do it like 15 times before it finally looks like really crisp and people are like did you do that on chat gpt i'm like yep so i did we, we got like one minute left but have you ever seen the um the happy bunny exercise on uh on chat gpt no you, you tell to create an image of a happy bunny and you mm -hmm. say good but make it happier oh. good. make it more happy no you don't understand make it the happiest bunny in the world and, mm -hmm. and it's like no not happy enough and it keeps creating more and more versions of this happy 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 bunny and, and it's still like... it finally creates this image of a bunny that is like god form mm -hmm. and it, like galaxies for eyes and it is essentially this happy blissful god of a bunny and so i've done that I did that with if so if you look at my live stream about um the boomer it was boomers um taking over the housing market or something like that and i just kept saying make them make him grumpier make him grumpier <laughs> make him even more grumpy and so if you look at the image it's like literally a, a an old man he's like ah! you know his eyes are like popping out and everything <laughs> so this is the yeah i love that so this is the uh -huh. image that it created super cool this could be a background uh, of an image, completely original image based on that book. And it like, totally mm -hmm. understands the concepts, but all right. I think, uh, I gotta go. I got an 11 o'clock video call, oh. Christina. This was fun. And okay. I think we're planning on doing this weekly now, right? That's yeah. Yeah. Plan. It's on my, it's on my calendar, sir. Mine too. Yes. Yeah. You, so you keep would, me accountable to that. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I love talking, <laughs> I love talking about YouTube. So yeah, it's always good for me. Yep. And it forces me to wake up without like, like sometimes I just kind of ease into the morning. So now it forces me to like get out of bed, get some makeup on, brush some teeth, you know, like forces me to get up early. So that I like that. <laughs>
early by, <laughs> by early mean nine o'clock in the morning uh, no well i i'm i'm central time yeah oh. so, so so now i get up at seven that's, oh, that's a gotcha. reasonable morning time and so all right all seven. right bye everybody <laughs> goodbye scissor sisters bye christina bye <laughs> be good see you see later everybody. next bye. week